Today on Gardening with Creekside, I am going to show you exactly how I created and planted this gorgeous tiered planter. Stay tuned. friends welcome to gardening with creekside i am jenny and today we are going to be creating and planting the partner that goes with the other tiered planter that i created oh gosh it was a while ago now this has been um, a fun little creative journey for me we're going to go back a little bit okay so back in the fall of course we had the um, order of michael carr pottery come some of it was the aqua pots some of it was just traditional containers one of those palettes was these beautiful white quilted pots these are traditional planters these are not aqua pots these are not the self-watering containers so on this palette there were a set of six there were these two large then two medium and two small the two smalls medium they sold like hotcakes they were gone lickety splits these guys are quite large they're a big pot so they're going to have um, really just that unique space for people to need a pot of this size so they didn't sell right away and so they came they stayed over the winter over the winter, we thought, hey, we're gonna put them right here because they'll be beautiful. We put uh, like a 15 gallon Emerald Green Arborvitae in them just to have them as kind of a showpiece flanking right here, the walkway up to the greenhouse. They were just still in their containers. We didn't actually plant them in the containers. Over the winter, Jerry and I were just talking and I had this bright idea because you know that I am such a huge fan of Kinsman Garden Company. They just have the most unique um, garden supplies, really high quality. I just love their products and I shop there quite frequently online. Notice that they had what's called the Pamela Crawford um, series designs of planters. So Pamela Crawford is a gardener who created this amazing system of planting your plants on the side of containers, whether it's a hanging basket or a hay rack. So she also had come up with this tiered system. I ordered it from Kinsman. Um, the a time became appropriate that I could go ahead and plant them. Well, wouldn't you know by then a little bird had made her nest and laid her eggs in this pot that had the emerald green arborvitae so i had to wait until the baby birds hatched and flew the nest before i could actually plant it i went ahead and did this one on a rainy saturday i planted it in the pouring down rain but it had time and i did it and it came out gorgeous obviously there's a big time difference between these two but I wanted to show you what they, um, the whole system, how it works, how I planted it, so forth and so on. Again, keep in mind that this is a display here at the nursery. Our, we have big, huge open areas. I need to make a big statement when people come here. I want to inspire gardeners. You don't have to plant it the exact same way. This is all for inspiration. If you want to copy the exact plants, great go for it if you don't no problem this is an inspiration that we are doing for you and our customers that come here to creekside nursery so without further ado let's get going okay comes as a whole system right you do have to buy the top planter separate because it comes in different sizes so what you're responsible for is providing the pot you need a pot of any size that has a drain hole in the bottom so I'm going to go and try to show you this as best I can because um, it can be a little weird. Um, okay, so first you have, this is what goes on the bottom. Basically, this is like a riser that goes underneath the pot. It has three bars that are welded on here. Those bars go down, just like little pot feet. And I might have to have Jerry help me do this because this is kind of a two-person job. So this goes underneath the pot directly onto the ground. Then you have, they give you bolts. They provide all the hardware. This is a bolt. I'm gonna use the largest one because this is a big pot, it's thick, and I need that height. So you've got the bolt, and then they give you the little washer and you put the washer on. You take the bolt, you slide it through. Well, you don't slide. See, it's been like, I don't know, six, eight weeks since I planted the last one. So you don't slide, you have to thread it. 
this way it doesn't come off. So this whole system is very secure and you don't have to worry about, I mean, we've had some pretty good wind storms. We've had, you know, rain and all that other stuff. And that planter behind me has never moved. So that's a good thing. And again, this is why I love the Kinsman company because all of their products are super tough and durable and they last. This is not cheap quality products. So we're getting there. It's getting screwed on. All right, so you're gonna screw it all the way flush, all right? So there we go. You're gonna lift up the pot. Slide it on. Oop, there's a little skink under there. Go away, little buddy. And then there you go. All right, so the pot is sitting on there. All right, okay. Next, what we're gonna do is they also give you this little guy, okay? This is like, it's gonna slide on top of that bolt and then we have a nut that's gonna screw on there. Now, it also is raised, let's see if you can, I don't know if you can see this. Let me show you. Tiptoe through the plants here. All right, can you see how there is one side that's um, flat and one side that's kind of raised? So this will, we're gonna put it down just like this so that the water can seep underneath and still drain through the drain hole. Because as you know, drainage in containers is a big deal. So that just slides on, then I take the nut and screw it on. All right, so now everybody is nice and secure. Now what we're gonna do is take the pipes, this is what the, the tiered system is, and we're gonna screw this onto that bolt that is sticking up. You just twist. Now, it does come with a 12 foot extender riser. And so you can use it or you can not use it. Because of the scale, <laughs> the size and scale of here at the nursery, I do want to go ahead and use it because I want my basket to be raised up as much as possible. So we're going to screw it on nice and tight. All right. Then, let's see if, oh, here we go. Trying to remember. So here we have the 12 foot extend, 12 foot, <laughs> 12 inch extender. It already has the bolt threaded on there. So then we take that, screw it on. Nice and tight. All right, they're not going anywhere. Next, you have this plate. And on this plate, on the top, this is what the basket's gonna sit on. On the top, you have the clips. This is what the basket's gonna clip into. And then on the bottom, there is where this is gonna slide down on top of the pole. You will notice that there are some little holes right here. We're gonna have a bolt that goes through here. So what we do, is we take out the little rubber stoppers. Get rid of those guys. This slides down on top. We line it up. We take our handy dandy bolt that they gave us. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, something's not right here. This is why I have my trusty assistant behind the camera. He keeps me straight. It's black because you don't want a silver one. And I was like, where's the net? <laughs> the net's in front of the camera, but hey, I digress. All right. So this slides through, get everybody lined up. Take the nut. All right, here we go. So it's all secure. It's completely attached to the pot. It's not going anywhere. Now, again, like I said before, you purchase 
the basket separately because it comes in different sizes. Obviously, this is a large pot, so if you had a smaller pot, you might want a smaller basket. This is a 16 inch basket. You can use this also as a hanging basket. So it comes with the hardware, the chain, the hook, everything that you need if you wanted to create this as a hanging basket. So this is where the Pamela Crawford um, geniusness comes in. So you notice this basket, it has the holes already pre-drilled in there, right? So we're actually gonna take plants and plant them in the side all the way around and then plant the top. Now, on the bottom we have, um, there is just a little hole right here that's gonna sit, there's a little bit, of a little notch that's gonna sit in there, but these clips are gonna clip onto the bottom ring of this container. So it just takes a little bit of finagling to make sure you get it right and get everybody hooked in. And once you get it lined up, then you slide it and it pops into pay place and make sure that everybody's hooked under those are. And this is all right. Now <laughs> it's leaning a little bit. So we'll have to, um, the pot, this, you know, Creekside, nothing is level around here. So we've got to actually level up the pot because the pot's tilting just a little bit. Um, we'll take care of that in the final preparations. All right, so now we've got it all assembled and now we're ready to start planting. The best thing that I found to do is first, I like to plant the top, but I like to go ahead and fill the bottom up with soil, makes it more stable. So we're gonna fill up the bottom with soil. Jerry's gonna help me because these are big bags that broke. So he's gonna help me. We're gonna fill it up with soil and then we'll start planting the top. Which one do you want to use? good. I'd rather be able to add some than When you're adding in your potting soil, you want to, of course, make sure that you pack it down as much as you can. This potting soil is nice and fluffy. When we want it nice and compact, that will help. You can also adjust your tier at that point. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to plant the um, pot first. Now, one other little addition that I got from Kinsman. This is completely, you know, optional. Because this is at the nursery, this is not gonna be on irrigation. We are, we're gonna have to hand water this. This is what they call a basket well. So this is a really fun little thing that they have um, that you can buy, not super expensive at all. And basically you put it in the bottom of your hanging baskets. And so this will hold water in the bottom, has holes in the top where the soil will be touching. And so it can kind of wick up water a little bit, not necessarily a self watering container, but it certainly will um, help retain some moisture. Now, Jenny's short, so I'm gonna use my bucket as my stool. And we're going to get some soil and start filling in just the bottom.
right, so here we go. Got my little bucket, and you have to fill this by layer by layer. You can't just like fill the whole container. I, it just doesn't work as well. So just, this is where gardening gets dirty, and it's all right. So you're gonna fill in the bottom, and you're gonna have soil that spills out of the holes a little bit. That's why I like to plant the top first, so that you don't get the plants underneath you all dirty. Now. On this basket, there's 18 holes on the sides. So I have three plants that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use the um, white licorice. This is the helichrysum. This is the one that's really vigorous. It's the one that you see predominantly over in the pot behind me. It gets really wild and kind of woolly. So this is fun. It brings in a silver um, color to it. And I'm just tossing pots because, you know, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna make a mess here. Again, this is one of the most vigorous ones. Now, you got a little finagling here, okay? There are little slits in the holes. She says that a four and a half inch pot will fit. So see, there we go. I've got my root ball in there. The plant part is falling out, and then I'm just simply going to nestle it in there. Now, because I'm using three different plants, basically I'm going to have three plants in a section, but I'm going to alternate them. So right now the white licorice is on the bottom. Next time it'll be up here on the top. And then I rotate so that there's not just one block of the same plant all the way around. Now you can do that. That's a total, you know, preference choice that you get to decide how you want to plant this. Um, this is the creative freedom in the whole thing. So what I'm gonna do now is I like to plant all of the bottom and then come up and plant the top. So this is black sweet potato vine. So it's gonna go here. It can be a little uh, tricky getting these guys in. So if you did have a smaller um, container pot size, it would work maybe a little bit better. Um, I have did find that the ones that had the more vigorous root system went in a whole lot easier. So you're just gonna stuff them in there. But that's the great thing about having a nice mature plant is that it doesn't mind too much if their roots get a little disturbed. So there we go with that. Now, this pot's gonna be slightly different than the last one simply because we're talking about like a six to eight week difference in planting and I don't have some of those plants still available. So here, I'm gonna, over there, I used the um, large terinia, the blue terinia. I'm gonna use chocolate drop coleus on this one. I wanted to use it on the other one and we were really low on supplies and Jerry was like, you can't use it, we don't have enough. Um, so I'm using it on this one. And the reason I do have terinia that I could use, but, the main reason I'm switching it up on, the, on this one is because the terinia has gotten completely lost in that container. Like you can barely see that there's even any terinia in there. So I'm hoping that maybe the coleus is a little bit more vigorous and can stand up to the helichrysum and the black sweet potato vine. So what I'm gonna do is just continue my pattern all the way around the bottom, add in some more soil, and then continue my pattern around the top.
thing that I did find challenging about doing this container is when you get up to the top, you start running out of room for your root balls to go. So you just gotta make sure you kind of tuck them down in there and everybody is nice and happy and snug down and pushed down as much as they will go. It's amazing it does not take long for this to fill in. So that's all pushed down. We're gonna do another little bit of a thin layer of soil on top of here, and then we're gonna put the flower power and the color. Now, Pamela Crawford does, of course she has a book, which is very helpful, I did get it, because she goes in there and tells you exactly um, the method and how to plant these, and she gives you plant suggestions, plants that she has found in her experience that maybe do really well on the side, because some plants do better on the top, than they do on the side. Some just do not do well in the side at all. So what we're gonna do for our big flower power on the top is the Super Bell's Grape Punch. Really the Grape Punch is what inspired this whole container for me because this spring I saw them growing and they were gorgeous and I loved them and I wanted to use them in a container. So with these guys, you're not going to plant them because there's has such extensive root systems in here. You're not going to be able to plant them like this. You're basically going to plant them on their side, which works well because super bells hate to be wet. They hate to have wet feet. So we're just going to go in here, lay them down, snug them between the other root systems as you can, and just really kind of push them down in here. Now again, <laughs> I ran out of plants. So I didn't have enough of the grape punch that I have in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna alternate with the Super Bell Double Blue. Same color palette, um, but it'll be a little bit of a different um, texture because it is a double bloom. Um, I think it'll be a sweet little addition. So I'm gonna alternate between Grape Punch and Double Blue. I had to think for a minute. All right, so I'm just gonna put those in there. Okay, so there's six total in here. She actually calls for 12. I don't know how in the world you'd fit 12 of them in here. So we're just gonna go with six when, um, and then we're gonna go with the centerpiece. I'm gonna go with the diamond snow because it'll get that nice, tight, white mound. Um, Pamela says that caladiums work great and white caladiums would be gorgeous. But when I planted the first one, their, um, the caladiums simply weren't ready. It was still too cool. Caladiums are now ready, but I kind of wanted to keep it a little bit consistent. So we're just gonna tuck it in there as such, and then backfill with soil. It's not gonna take a lot because <laughs> there's so many roots in here. Um, obviously you're gonna have to water the top basket part a little bit more than what you would, um, you know, the bottom, because the bottom's gonna have a lot more of a soil reservoir, and we'll, t we'll hold on to the um, moisture fertilizer a lot more. So what we're gonna do is get the soil in there. I'm, because we are using our professional soil, this is not the proven winners, there's absolutely no fertilizer in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle the slow release on the top. So that way it'll work itself down every time we water. It will be fertilized. Obviously this is gonna be a full, full sunspot. Right now the clouds have graced us with their presence. So, um, but otherwise this would be sun up to sun down. I'm gonna go ahead and get some mulch on here and then this top part will be done. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay, the top part is planted. Now we're gonna stitch start on the bottom. Now the bottom part is really fun. Again, I'm gonna have to make a substitution because I do not have any Supertunia Bordeaux. It flew out of here. So we're gonna use a bunch of Royal Velvet. Now, to begin with, around the pole, we are gonna use 
the Angel Face Super White Angelona. Now these are nice and big. I went ahead and used four around the pole in the last one. So basically we're just gonna go in and kind of do the four corners. Now I know that I need to add soil here, but for right now it's okay because the plants will just kind of sit on top. And then as I plant, I will add the soil in there. You'll notice, and I like to do front to back, side to side. That way I know my spacing is right. So we get four of these guys in here. These will branch out and get nice and thick as they grow. You can see, I mean, obviously back there, <laughs> they're loving life. If you have some that start to get a little too leggy and long and start to kind of flop over like some of mine are doing, just go ahead and cut them back. It's all right. Pruning on a plant is a good thing. It will actually help you have um, branch out and get thicker, stronger stems. I've already cut some of those after um, today or this afternoon. I will probably go ahead and cut some more. So basically I have surrounded the pole with the Angel Face Super White. I'm gonna go ahead, add some more soil to this and get in there between your roots. Cause remember, you don't want any air pockets between your roots. That is not good. And even though this is a very large container, you will notice, what did I do? Did I add anything to the bottom to take up space? No. You want to use all soil because your soil holds your water. Your soil holds your fertilizer. You can't, packing peanuts, pine cones, plastic water bottles do not hold moisture and they do not hold food. So do not put that in the bottom of your pots. It's a no-no. I know you think in the long run it's gonna save you money, but it actually hurts your plants. So don't do that. Now what we're going to do is come in here with three Diamond Frost Euphorbia. Now I debated on whether or not to actually put these guys in this pot. They're in the other pot, but you can't see them because um, everything else took over. But there are little teeny tiny little pockets of Euphorbia sticking out. So I said, well, we're just going to go for it anyway, and we're going to stick them in there. I'm only doing three, so whereas my angel face were more of a square this is going to be a little bit of a triangle and as you can tell <laughs> everything just kind of blends together eventually so you don't have to worry an extreme amount as far as like the exact spacing because they all just go together and um yeah they get very happy i'm wearing a white shirt today which you know normally i would not wear a white shirt when i'm planting but this is a fun one. This is one that Christine made us. And on the back it says, life is too short for minimum spacing. I mean, that certainly applies to this container, right? Um, normally I don't follow that theory, but on this container, I am. Life's too short for minimum spacing. Here we go. Now, what we're gonna do is go around the bottom and I've got more of my white licorice that's gonna go in there. I have got Royal Velvet Super Junior. That is gonna go in there. I will double this up because I don't have any Bordeaux. And then my last one that I'm gonna use is the Sparkling Amethyst Verbena because they're gonna be gorgeous. They're gonna fill in. So what I'm gonna do is just go around and basically alternate plants, one then the other, fill it in with some soil, and then we'll go from there.
Okay, friends, everything is planted. It has got water, uh, not water soluble, time release fertilizer on it. I mulched the top. I did not mulch the bottom simply because there's no room to put mulch. Um, so of course you wanna water this in really well. You're gonna notice the first couple of times, really for a while that you water in the top, you're gonna have some water come through your holes. It's fine, they'll be okay, I promise. Um, so you really wanna get this nice and saturated in there. Of course, this is, you know, we're getting into the hot part of the summer here in North Carolina. It's a little later than I would want to as far as planting this, but it is what it is. Life happens, right? And you get it done when you get it done. So we're gonna get this nice and watered in um, and then come to the bottom. Of course, the top will drain to the bottom. So it's very happy. As far as maintenance on these containers, what I will do, of course, is use the water soluble fertilizer you can use them in conjunction with each other in tandem. They are different um, types of fertilizers. They work in totally different ways, um, but it's a great to use them together because obviously the water soluble is more of an instant fertilizer for them, um, an instant food. Time release, of course, is released. <sighs> Good times. So the two fertilizers work totally different from each other. Time release is based and released off of the temperature. The water soluble is more of an instant food. So they work great together um, and you're gonna need lots of food for these flowering plants. That's what gives you that nice, lush, dark green color. That's what gives you your flowers. If things get a little too long and leggy and just get really out of control, all you're gonna have to do is take your scissors, take your clippers, and just pinch things back. Remember, all of this will handle pruning really well. Obviously, right now, they're nice and watered in. They're, you know, as we like to say, like little, little rats, but they'll, they'll bounce back as soon as they dry off. Clearly the one next door is very happy. This one will only take a couple of weeks to catch up to next door. These are sisters. They're not identical twins. They're sisters. They're cousins. They have very much the same look to them. Are they planted the exact same way? No. Do they have to be? No. Can they? Yes. Again, this is the freedom of gardening. You can do it however you would like to. Um, <clears throat> but again, I hope you have found this interesting. I will link Kinsman Gardens in the video description so you can go there and check out the whole system if you are interested in doing this um, in your space. Again, this has been a really fun, whimsical uh, container here at the nursery. People are really excited and have enjoyed looking at this guy next door. So I hope that you have enjoyed this. I hope you have been inspired. Go out and create something unique and different. Just have fun in gardening because if it's not fun, why do it? Have fun, get out there, do it, enjoy life. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye, friends.